So I have this nice simple modest 25 foot toy hauler and I was looking for a patio fence kit to put into it but the more I looked the more I found that they were just extremely expensive and not really all that impressive. A lot of them were just like rivets and trampoline netting and some tubing. And they were like two to three grand. These kits, you had to get them custom made. Even the stupid ladder is like $500. He might be able to force the mainstream to pay those outrageous prices. But for us, for the DIYers, this is a cakewalk. Just some flux core and a Harbor Freight special, some hinges from the hardware store and your local metal shop has the rest. With that, you'll be able to take your small, modest toy hauler ramp door and turn it into a luxurious patio that you would only see in some of the higher end models where they come stock. Stay tuned and watch the full tutorial starting now. All they are is like trampoline mesh, rivets, and some steel tubing. Um, we're just gonna cut this up, weld it up. I think a little porch area on, on a trailer this small is pretty crucial. You know, some of the versatility it has, but you know, obviously space is an issue, so let's create some space. One by two tubing, 16 gauge, but I probably would be smaller. I would think 18 gauge is the next smallest one, but what is that, 16, 17, or 18? Yeah. Plus we don't, plus we have 030 wire. You could honestly do this whole thing with just rivets and corner brackets and do it that way. Or you can make it out of PVC tubing and like dog screen. I've seen people even do that, but we're trying to do it a little bit more long lasting robust. So we're gonna go ahead and use 16 gauge steel tubing, one by two. We cut them in a 90 degree angle in all corners. And then we are gonna go ahead and weld them up to the best of our ability. Did I mention this is my first weld job? I specifically made a video on it so I could show everybody that and though it looks intimidating, it's really not as bad as you need. The cheapest way to go do it is to get a small flux core welder. You can go to Harbor Freight and get the Chicago Electric or the Titanium one. And they're both under 200 bucks. Like the Titanium 125 Easy Flux, it really is fairly easy considering that we made that. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but you know, it does get better the longer you use it and the more practice you get. Plus you can use it with a standard 110 outlet out of your garage. For just a cosmetic architectural project that's not low bearing, this is perfect, it's gonna work. The height I felt was gonna be good for these was 42 inches long by 32 inches high. And we go ahead and we clean up these welds. This is my first welding job ever, which is why I'm strongly encouraging everybody to go get a little Easy Flux Titanium from Harbor Freight or even the, the Chicago Electric Special. Weld something like this architectural grade stuff, not structurally load bearing or anything. Just go and have fun with it and get it done. And then clean it up if you have to. We also went and got some door hinges from the hardware store. And we're just gonna go ahead and use those to join everything. We're gonna go ahead and put rivets inside. The rivets are flat enough to where if you, you know, do all three on each end and they butt up together, it should butt up without binding. And these are just standard aluminum rivets. You can get stainless steel rivets, but I think it'll be a little overkill for this. In some spots, the stainless steel rivets are much stronger and we'll probably use those as well. But the structure itself is folding out well. We just build as we go. <laughs> We can now measure for what was gonna take place the long way. If I remember, it's actually longer that way. So there'll be like a shorter side here, and then we're gonna leave a gate area. Cause we're gonna have a gate that opens up with some stairs that come off. And plus we're gonna make some little stanchions that prop up the bottom itself and give it a nice little spring platform. Cause relying on these cables to open up this whole thing with multiple people on it is a temporary solution for a real problem here. Let's try that out. Here we go to weld up and finish the left and right front pieces that are going to surround the actual gate. But to join them so this whole thing doesn't fall apart because we need to make this thing kind of pitbull proof, we're gonna go ahead and make this like double fork joining bracket thingy. We do this by getting a one inch tube, which is the exact same thickness as the one by two inch tubing we used for all the gate walls. Then we used one eighth inch flat bar, which is the same thickness as, I mean, our width as the tube and we wouldn't just weld it all together on both sides to make a jointed end. Um, I went a little overboard and then just later on just tacked it in spots, but this, this, this whole thing keeps everything stable. So I, could, I did kind of overbuild it, at least on the bottom. That'll be the bottom. I just flux corded. I didn't want to deal with that thing. That thing is so much easier to use. It's right in the spot and it does a pretty darn good job considering it just splatters. But that's because when it's all said and done, it's going to slide in here like this. Then we're gonna put bolts. So I need to grind this side down a little bit more. Doesn't seem like it's gonna fit in too flush right there, but after we grind that piece down, that should slide in. 
and that will hold it like that and that is our cross beam we're gonna go ahead and prep this whole thing for painting the sides came out really well it's ready to go a little bit more work than i thought if you really think about it it's only a handful of welds x amount of welds and x amount of time cutting them and tubing it is a little bit of labor intensive it's taking me a little bit longer than i thought but the project itself is going to be i think much i think much more durable things we can do this and then eventually the mods we can possibly do like also potentially making poles that will attach to the sides that will make an arizona room right in the back and that would give this trailer substantially more room than it has ever had it essentially turn into a different animal a separate room we could make So the entire thing is framed out and it's all going to work. Now we just have to paint this. After I painted it, I mean, I'm using Rustolian Professional paint. Probably would have been worth it just to get it, take it to a powder coat shop and got it powder coated, but it came out all right. In fact, I kind of like the stainless steel look. I wish I would have just clear coated the stainless steel, but once I painted them black, I realized they probably look better this way. As for the actual screen material, I had an old trampoline mesh net that I kept around just for this project because when i looked at all the other ones that was what was there but i will tell you it was much harder to seam that and flatten it out so i just gave up on that this is perforated metal this is the screen material we're going to end up using this is already straight i can cut it with some cheap little harbor freight metal shears and i'll be done in like five minutes and i can either tack weld it onto the frame or attach it with rivet just easier to use one sheet if we cut it correctly We'll do every quadrant that we need to do, and we might actually be able to, to have enough left over for the major door piece, which we're not decided on what the door is gonna be like, but I have a feeling it's gonna be like this. So I didn't do this on purpose, but I made these 32 inches, and so divided in thirds is 96 inches, exactly eight feet. So we just happen to have an eight foot sheet, and so we lucked out. They're about 60 something dollars a sheet here. You can probably find them cheaper or more expensive given the, the massive inflation costs of all materials. But uh, before they used to be dirt cheap, and sometimes you can just find scraps and scraps of this at a yard for even cheaper. So the screen material by itself does look really nice. I should've just done it to begin with, but I really wanted to use that trampoline mesh. It would've saved me a few hundred bucks. But yeah, but whatever, what can you do really? What can you do? Initially, I did try to tack weld it in place, but that failed. So I just used rivets. These are just standard 3 16 by 1 8 inch pool or 1 4 inch pool line rivets you'd get from the hardware store. You got a grip of them. And the 3 16 inch titanium drill bits, you just get them in a set. We're using impact ready drill bits and it just carves right through the tubing and we get it all done. We also had rivets with an extra large pan head, which worked out perfectly because I had just enough of this uh, perforated metal to make everything, including the door screen. So I used those pan head rivets to compensate for the lack of material that I had. So it'll be a little bit stronger on just those spots, but it did come out quite nice. So this is all nice and dandy, but you need some way to get up into that gate. So we made a ladder out of the last remaining scrap pieces. And I do mean the last remaining, meaning that the ladder came out kind of questionable because we didn't have a whole lot of material to be free and work with, but still it came out all right. We left the bottom open to make extenders later on. We'll do that, but right now we're just making sure the actual steps are in a good section for the angle. Then we took some of those little triangular brackets that you know we cut out from the initial tube and they're just scraps. We welded those on there to make little joint hinges. Then we got a uh, half inch tubing and they fit right in there into that one inch little offset hinges. We put those in there did little bottom ones so they kind of pivot and this whole thing kind of folds together. It was real loose so we took some 1 8 flat bar, the same stuff we used to make that little fork and we crossed it back and forth and they made some little cross beams and it was actually pretty strong that way. Also this looks kind of funky down here because there's a pin that gets pulled there and this can fold up. And there's a stanchion there and then we have the other stanchion that's just chilling back out there. And obviously those will be placed a little bit farther out so where they give you a little bit more leverage. But the stanchions work actually rather well just with one stanchion. This thing actually held up pretty good. We had a few people on it earlier, heavier individuals, and it held. I got these rubber strips. These are strips, they're called, it's called Gator Skins Rubber Matting. I'm gonna leave you a link to the product in our in our website. It's very UV resistant, super tacky on the bottom. Once it sticks, as long as it's prepped right, this stuff does not come off. It lasts for a year. Here 
you gotta just cheat it for a second. But do not press down until you're like ready, like super pressed down. You're gonna glide it and cheat it on to where it guides correctly. But the minute you press, that's it for it. It's gonna be very, very, very hard to get off. And then later on, and <clears throat> when it sits here for like 24 plus hours, it's not gonna ever wanna come off. Yeah, it works like a gym. It's nice and sturdy. Works fantastic. Like a little crooked, a little weird. Come on in here like that. I have a door handle for this thing. kind of tapped and drilled these and painted them last night here's one that still needs to be done and tapped and drilled made made them out of an old fender that i found and then a few remaining scrap pieces that i had from uh just scavenging the junk pile this came out quite all right but they, they need they need skins at least on the top on the bottom maybe not so much but here with that that part's actually going to go against the door It gives substantial amounts of room and security and just a whole nother real honest living platform in terms of things we can do. We can even figure out another way to kind of mount some sort of uh, lighting apparatus or shade apparatus. A possible we can we can mount it up there and then we can have uh, little post attachments that come here and we can make the post attachments really anyway. And somewhere between 25 to three grand now to get one of these made and we did this for 600 bucks roughly plus time but that's the beauty of being a diyer your time is whatever it's worth to you and this was worth all the time to me to learn the knowledge and skill to build this thing so.